Hi, it's Luke with Out of Darts. Today, I'm gonna run you through everything you'd wanna know about short dart magazines. Let's get going. Those of you who have been in the hobby for any length of time probably have realized that short darts are the future of the hobby. When I joined this hobby about six years ago, the only short darts that were out there were what you would call a Stefan. And there's essentially two ways to make a Stefan. One is to take foam back a rod or used foam from another dart and put your own head on it. And the other is to essentially cut an existing dart in half. Now, the reason you'd wanna do this is because the aerodynamics of a short dart with a shorter tail with more of the weight in the front are much better than a full length dart. Short darts fly farther at the same FPS and they are far, far more accurate. Once you've gone to a short dart, you probably won't ever wanna fire a full length again. Really quick on the dart types, there are quite a few out, but right now in front of me, I've got probably the most popular. We've got the Worker Gen 1 and 2. We've got the Worker Gen 3, which have a different glue and a different tip. We've got the Bamboo Darts, which are from Dart Zone Pro. They come with the Mark 1, and you can buy these, I believe, at Target still. And then you've got the Jet Quick Darts, which come in red and blue and feature a TPU, different kind of dome tip. And, um, these are probably the hardest tip of them all. And then finally, we've got the Adventure Force Pro darts. And these have very quickly become the gold standard of darts. And I say this while not even being able to retail these as a normal retailer. Uh, you may find these on my website, but we are really only selling these for our international customers to check them out. So please don't email me asking me to discount and match Walmart's price because we are literally buying these at Walmart to resell just to those specific customers that are really excited to test out these darts where they can't get them in their own country and um, they're willing to have them shipped around the world to check them out. Um, that should be an obvious cue to Dart Zone to hurry up and get the stuff in all the other countries. They want it. <laughs> um, but these have become the industry or hobby standard and I'm really, really overall just very impressed. They're extremely durable. The tips last a long time and they perform very well and they're very accurate. In the time that I've been in the hobby, short darts have now taken over just about everything. To the point where we now have a blaster on the shelf at Walmart that comes with a short dart magazine and an adapter. That's the Nexus Pro and the Aeon Pro. First, I'm gonna talk about the major releases as far as the actual magazines themselves. Uh, we started off with the Katana. Katana is made by a company called Jet out of Singapore. They're manufactured, I believe, in China, of course. And this is a complementary product to the Jet Sita. This is the Sita S, the most recent version. We do sell these on the shop. Uh, this is a pretty standard magazine, but it's not proven to be not as popular as the Talons. And this was largely Jet's fault. Jet beat everybody to this by at least a year and a half, and the supply chain was horrible. They were unavailable, they were out of stock. I was one of the few limited US sellers, and we constantly had a problem getting more of them and getting them here in any reasonable amount of time. Now, one advantage of the CETA magazines, the Katanas, are that you do have access to this follower, which can be nice if you ever get something in the magazine or need to reshift it or whatever. But these are traditionally and typically only compatible with uh, the magwell that comes with one of the jet products or third party uh, community blasters that are 3D printed. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Next on the scene were the worker talon mags. These are a 15 round magazine that are readily available. We carry them in six different colors, including clear, glow-in-the-dark, transparent black, transparent blue, transparent purple, and transparent red. Now these two colors here are actually custom for our shop. We're the only shop that will carry these. And these magazines have proved to be extremely, extremely popular over the past few years. They're very durably made. They've got a nice sort of brushed finish to them. And I really like these. These are my personal go-to magazine. Worker followed these up with the 18 round curved mag. So there's a slight curve at the bottom. If you compare them for length, you get about an extra uh, three and a half centimeters or inch and a quarter of length, maybe inch and a half of length. These are very similar, except they've gone with a worker logo and they also show uh, they do not have the brushed look. They've got just a standard um, 
high gloss finish. Like the 15 round magazines, the 18 round magazines can actually hold about 20, but again, do be careful with how many you load because you are eventually gonna squish your darts and cause performance issues. Next up, Worker then released very recently these angled magazines. These Talon 18 round angled magazines feature a 15 degree angle and they just kind of have a cool look when they're sticking out of a blaster because of their angle. They're especially nice with things like the Chris Vector kit on the Strife where it really matches the look of the real steel counterpart. So these are kind of a new offering. Worker also has a new blaster called the Phoenix that will use these exclusively. It's worth noting that these magazines, all three versions of the Talon, are not intercompatible. You've got two sides. You've got angled and you've got regular, and these require different magwell adapters. These two are compatible with each other. They're cross-compatible, while the angled needs a special adapter, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. One other little product I do want to mention is this 3D printed Extra Edge Talon extension that is designed by my buddy Ton. We sell these on the shop, they're 3D printed and they're either five rounds or six rounds to turn your straight 15 into a straight 20 or 21 round magazine. Kind of a nice little adapter option that he came up with to extend the capacity. Uses the same spring, super easy to install and kind of a lot of fun. Lastly, we have the Dart Zone Pro magazines and the Nexus Pro magazines, which look very similar, but are surprisingly not cross compatible. Now, the reason they did this was, I believe, to make their adapter compatible with the Talon magazine so that they could have a much wider appeal. And it was probably a wise decision considering the tens of thousands of these Talon mags that already exist out there. So the adapter for the 1.1, well, will work just fine with the short darts, will not work with the any of the other magazines that are out. They are just sized too incorrectly to work. However, the Nexus Pro adapter features a unique double mag release inside of the magazine, allowing it to work with both the included Nexus Pro mags and a Talon mag. So, these are directly compatible with Talons right out of the box. So if you've got a Nexus Pro, an Aeon Pro, all of the worker magazines are compatible right out of the box, except for the angled one, which will require a special adapter. I think this decision was really great on Dart Zone's part, so I'm really happy to see that. It just gives us more options and makes it easier to find more magazines and in more colors, ultimately. Moving on to the adapters. Adapters are where a lot of the confusion can happen because there are specific adapters for flywheel blasters, such as the Strife, and there are specific adapters for Springers. Now, some of these are cross compatible. You can generally use the Springer version in a flywheeler, but it's really gonna depend on your blaster. So I would recommend choosing the one that is directly intended for it. Starting with a standard adapter. This is a standard Talon adapter that works in just about any standard Nerf mag. And this will take either the 18 rounds or the 15 rounds. And it will allow you to put them inside a blaster like say the Nexus Pro. It will also let you put it inside of a blaster like the Sita if you wanted to replace the magwell to instead use Talon mags. Now where you would not want to use that adapter would be for a blaster like the Strife. Because of where this dart sits, it actually can cause feeding issues. And this is where we, a lot of customers run into issues, which is one of the reasons we're making this video. Also of note, we are making little individual videos for every single one of these product that will not be on my main channel. They'll be on my secondary channel and they'll be on the product listing. We're hoping this will really help people make better decisions and make sure that they're getting exactly what they were hoping to get. Now, it's worth noting too that this is a detent based system, a little bit like our Jupiter. So when you put this in here, you're simply pulling out. And that is probably my personal preference because I never find that I actually need the mag release. These magazines are not very heavy, darts don't weigh very much, and there's no real danger or risk of this falling out. So I like just being able to have this in my blaster, no mag release, you know, shoot, you're firing and you just pull it out. And it's pretty easy to just pop out, pop a new one in. 
and I found that to be pretty useful. Now, that's ultimately all personal preference, so if you prefer a mag release, um, we do offer that version as well. Next, I want to talk about the flywheel variant of the same unit, and these are two versions, one with a mag release, one without, and this is for a flywheel blaster, and we call these forward-facing mag adapters because the magazine sits physically farther forward than it does on the standard one. And what this allows is for the extended strife pusher to push that dart into the flywheel since the magazine is sitting far enough forward to allow that to happen. So it is important to choose the correct one. Again, with this one, we've got a version with a mag release and a version that is just a um, pull, pull to release. So you've got options there as far as your personal preference, which I think is fantastic. Now, again, the angled magazine is not compatible with any of those adapters out there that have been seen so far. So the angled magazines from Worker have their own adapters. Again, there are two variants. One is a forward facing, which has this missing space here. That's for your Strife. I think these are kind of fun because, uh, especially with a blaster like the Chris Vector, you get that feel like the real steel equivalent. And uh, that's kind of a fun, fun look overall. Worker has a new blaster called the Phoenix that will be coming out soon that will use exclusively these with a grip through grip feel. And I think that should be actually a really good use of this magazine. I expect we'll also see quite a few community-based blasters that will work with this magazine. Uh, and that'll be nice because I think in a grip, you get the better angle rather than trying to correct the angle either by having a vertical grip or having a change in direction inside of the mag well, which can cause more inaccuracies overall as far as your actual blaster performance and accuracy. Currently, the angled mag well adapter doesn't come with a mag release version, but I do expect Worker will probably release this eventually. That said, I wouldn't wait for it because I don't know when, and it might be that they wait to see how popular the magazines are before offering that version. When it comes to community blasters, Talons are clearly the king. This is the Kestrel from my buddy Timmy over at Ensel Gulges on uh, Etsy. He makes quite a few really, really neat little blasters, and this is out-of-the-box Talon compatible. Again, it will not work with the angled version, of course, because it doesn't go into the magwell correctly. I'm currently building a Lepus, and that's another example of a Talon compatible magwell. Uh, this one is a little different. It actually doesn't use a standard mag release. It's just got a little tab inside that sort of uses uh, just friction, more or less, to hold this in place. And given that this is an itty bitty little blaster uh, that with a grip through mag, that you know, it makes sense that the, they've done this this way so they don't have to add any more bulk to get that mag release in there. There are also examples of community blasters such as this Talon Claw. This Talon Claw was built for me by Ryan over at Silver Fox Industries. I'll link that video down in the description. We covered his build process. This is a neat version of the Talon Claw because it's got a dual paddle design for the mag release where one holds the katana mag and the other holds the Talon. So this is interchangeable your buddy could hand you a different mag and you can uh, switch back and forth between either magazine type. And then of course, as expected, we're not going to be able to fit um, the dart zone mag because it wasn't designed for it and it wasn't designed for this, so that wouldn't function either. Another interesting point that I thought of while looking at different various blasters I've got is the Hummingbird. Now, the Hummingbird was a really cool blaster, also by Timmy, same guy who did the Kestrel, Ansu Gulges. He's over on Etsy, you can find his stuff there. I don't know if he's still up and selling, but he's got some tremendously cool blasters. Um, this actually has an angled mag well, but it only takes a standard Talon mag. Um, I don't know if he'll eventually consider updating this because I'm sure this blaster was an insane amount of work, but it looks very cool with whatever mag you put in it. But these came out later, and I really think that the hobby is probably going to embrace having these angled mag wells because it would make his feeding mechanism in here so much easier to deal with because the dart would already be in the right orientation 
rather than having it at a 15 degree angle and then needing correction as the dart goes into the flywheels, which can cause some inaccuracies. I hope this video has been helpful for you. I love short darts. I'm getting more and more into dart blasters. A lot of people say I only like Rival, but that is just not true. I'm uh, very interested in everything, all things Nerf modding. I think this is very much not only the future of Nerf modding, but it is the present of Nerf modding because if you're firing long darts at a short dart and you both have the same blaster, you are not going to win that exchange if all other things are equal. I'd love to hear from you in the comments anything I missed, any questions, any feedback. Like I've said in the last couple of videos, I've got a video editor now and between Perry and I, we are working really hard to make sure that we're actually in there responding to your comments and listening to what you all want for future videos. So let us know if we missed anything, if you have any other questions about these. Like I said, each of these is a product on the website and we have individual videos for literally every one of these Magwell adapters that are on the product listing. So if you're still not sure which is which and what one you need, just check out the product listing and you'll see all of the info there that you need. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm out of darts.